One of the frequently asked questions in the technology world today is containers versus serverless. What is winning? Let's just take a step back and let's talk a little bit about containers, serverless, and then discuss about what is winning. Let's start with serverless. Now, what is the most important concept behind serverless? It's pay for use. If a function is called 10 times, you only pay for the 10 invocations. You don't really need to worry about running a server and paying for the entire duration of the server. The second thing is you don't need to worry about the server. Everything is in the background. Even serverless functions make use of servers. That's where they run. But the important selling point of serverless is that you don't need to worry about server. You don't need to launch up a server, install an application there and do anything around that. So that's serverless. The two selling points was pay as you go and you don't need to worry about servers. Now let's switch towards containers. The selling point of containers was standardization, irrespective of whether it's a Java application or a Python application or a Node.js application, you build the same kind of image. It does not matter what is inside the container image, you run it the same way. So that's the selling point of containers, standardization. There is another selling point with respect to being efficient when compared to virtual machines. Virtual machines had something called a virtual machine tax. And in the case of running containers, the tax was much lesser. So containers are more performant than virtual machines. So those are the selling points with respect to serverless and containers. Now, what is winning the war today? What is winning the containers versus the serverless war? Let's talk a little bit about the evolution of serverless. Earlier, serverless meant just functions. Probably the most popular serverless services when, which come to our mind whenever we talk about serverless are AWS Lambda. Maybe something like Cloud Functions, maybe something like Azure Functions. This was what the original intent of serverless was. However, if you look at today, there are a lot of other services which are called serverless, right? Google Cloud, Google calls App Engine as a serverless platform as a service offering. Google calls Cloud Run as a platform to run serverless containers, right? So the concept of serverless expanded from just function to containers to even things like databases. Google calls BigQuery a serverless analytical database. One of the biggest advantages of going for BigQuery is that you can scale storage and compute separately. So your compute is serverless in that place. Only when you run a query, you would have compute infrastructure provision. And as soon as you run the query, the serverless infrastructure is taken away from you. So if you look at the evolution of serverless, earlier it was just functions. Today we talk about containers. Today we talk about serverless databases and a lot of things like that. So serverless also evolved during the last few years. And the same is the case with containers, right? It was just containers. And after that, we also are now talking about a lot of container orchestration things. In initially, it was Docker Compose, Swarm. And over the last few years, we have evolved to Kubernetes. And today, Kubernetes is one of the most popular container orchestration platforms. So what is winning, containers or serverless? I think both containers and serverless have evolved a lot. And today, both of them have the right use cases. Serverless probably is something which has changed a lot. Initially, when we talk about serverless, it was just about functions, but off late, I think more and more things can be run in a serverless way, containers, databases. And that's where I see the evolution with serverless going forward. So both serverless and containers are winning. 